This is not a tourist expedition. Here, by the Kutari River, scientists have set up nets to catch fish for their studies. But this morning, something else got tangled up in the net. It's a giant anaconda. The huge aquatic snake had been waiting for prey in the shallow water, only to find itself the victim. For the indigenous tribes of the region, the meat of these reptiles, which typically grow to three meters long, is considered a delicacy. The researchers set this one free at a place where they know there aren't any nets. Back at the camp, Dutch biologist Olaf Banke gathers his team for a prep talk. They want to examine trees in an area they've marked off. 20 meters there, and uh, we are going to look for every tree uh, above 10 centimeters uh, diameter at breast height. The rainforest is located on the Guyana Shield, a two billion year old geological formation. Its characteristics is that it's a low disturbance forest, so there are no volcanoes here, no whirlwinds like uh, real uh, hurricanes, something like that. So the trademark of this forest, it has been standing here for a long time. It's growing slowly and that produces hardwoods. After an hour long march, the researchers arrive at their destination. <laughs> the area under study is 250 meters long and 40 meters wide. It's the first formal survey of the plants and animals in this part of the jungle. From a satellite image you would only see forest, but you don't know what kind of forest it is and how big the trees uh, are that are standing there. So one of the things we do with this plot is give a first estimation of, of the biomass and that gives us an idea how, how much biomass, how much carbon is stored in this area. Elsewhere, Canadian biologist Burton Lim gets to work. He's studying small mammals and he set up 120 traps to catch rats and mice. Well, it's heavy so I know something's in it. It's jumpy. Okay, this one, it might jump out at you, so... Uh... A terrestrial spiny rat. In addition to rats and mice, bats are also among the scientists' prey. Last night, one of Lim's nets caught a greater spear-nosed bat, a rare catch. Uh, a lot of times this species is actually found higher up in the canopy, um, but of course, from time to time, it'll come down into the lower canopy. Uh, yeah, so it's good that I was able to catch this because normally um, I would have to put the nets up into the, uh, into, up into the trees, so I was happy and lucky to get this one. Olaf Banke and his team have completed half their grid. Ginger, ginger wood, yellow. They know the rainforest plays an important role in the global ecosystem. A tree has a green leaf and uh, that green leaf takes up solar uh, energy, solar power, like a solar panel and um, uh, that is used to create energy for the plant itself. In that process, called photosynthesis, it takes up CO2 from the atmosphere. And then the C, the carbon, is uh, cut from the O2, the oxygen. Now the carbon is stored in the plant and the O2, the oxygen, is emitted into the air so we can breathe. A nutmeg tree presents the team with an interesting finding. Hey, Banky. 
Usually this genus has red latex coming out, but this one has yellow and uh, that we have never seen before. So this species is very known with uh, the trio people uh, here in Kwamala Samutu. They call it uh, Lapa Lapa. But for us, this is an unknown species. It might be new for Suriname, and perhaps it's even a new species on a whole. So do they have a new discovery on their hands? To clarify, they examine leaves and fruit from the tree. The research camp is a temporary home for around 20 scientists. The three-week expedition is funded by Alcoa, one of the world's largest aluminium producers. The multinational conglomerate has an interest in the natural resources believed to lie beneath the Suriname jungle. For their part, the scientists want to show that the jungle's unique features make this fragile habitat unsuitable for surface mining. The ecosystem here depends on maintaining its large biodiversity. A lot of um, animals uh, do very similar things, uh, so the bats aren't the only pollinators of flowers of trees, um, but bats are nocturnal, uh, so they'll concentrate on uh, flowers of, you know, uh, flowers that are uh, in bloom uh, at night, uh, whereas in the daytime, uh, hummingbirds will concentrate on uh, flowers of different trees um, in the daytime, and then of course insects will do very similar things also. He is now preparing the greater spear-nosed bat for another purpose, far away, a museum. Burton Lim has caught around 50 different rats, mice and bats, more than expected. It will take around four months to analyse all the findings. The next step for the researchers is to publish their report about their jungle expedition along the Kutari River.